Hello everyone. Today we are going to build an NIDAN workflow to create a two-way data sync from Pipedrive to MySQL and vice versa. So I already prepared the workflow and set up my MySQL database and my Pipedrive account. And this is the workflow that we will be going through in a minute. And for today's tutorial, we are focusing on synchronizing contact person data from Pipedrive. I have already filled up Pipedrive with some fake contact data, three in total. And I've already set up a MySQL database, which we're looking at through AdMiner at the moment with a very simple database table schema for name, email, phone and an updated on timestamp that automatically updates every time we update the record that we will use later on. So right now, as we can see in MySQL, we only have one contact, Kai Jacobson, and in Pipedrive, we have three. Two are missing in MySQL. So let's go to our workflow. Our workflow schedules on a trigger for the purpose of our demo, we are using the execute workflow button to manually execute our workflow. Once we've done that, we'll see that first off, we are getting all the MySQL data in our MySQL node. This is a simple query to select ID, name, email, and phone from our contacts table. And we are fetching all the pipe drive contact persons we are using the resource person, the operation get many, and return all. So the pipe drive data format is pretty more complex than our SQL table. So what we'll do first is we are using the set node to transform our data to match a more simpler version of our MySQL database. So what we've done is we've created some values for ID, name, email, phone, and updated on. And we created some expressions to match incoming data to our set fields. For example, we used the ID expression to map an ID, or we used things like our primary email to match to our email field. So now we have a clean data set and both of our MySQL and Pipedrive data is coming into the two inputs of our compare data set node. So the compare data set node is getting two inputs, one from our MySQL node and one from our Pipedrive or our set node. And we compare the data sets using the fields email to match. So anything that has the same email address is regarded as one entity. And we can see that the node has four outputs that you can use by connecting different nodes here. And right now, at the moment, we see that if something is only in input one, so if something is only in MySQL, we create a pipe drive person if something is only in input two, we create a MySQL contact. If it's the same, we don't care about that. And if it's different, we'll go a, another route that is actually updating the pipe drive person or MySQL contact in the end. For our first execution, let's remember we had only one contact in our MySQL database. So what happened is we got one contact from MySQL and three contacts from Pipedrive. We matched over email and we can see now that we have two items going down to our create contact MySQL node because two of those emails didn't exist in MySQL. The create contact MySQL node is pretty simple. It's using the insert operation for the table contact and it's matching the incoming columns, name, email, and phone, name, email, and phone, to actually create or insert those items. So if we now go back to AdMiner, we can see that in our MySQL database, we have created the two missing contacts. 
So now let's do it again, but the other way around. Let's go to pipe drive and actually delete these two contacts here. So now we only have one contact in pipe drive and three in MySQL. Execute again. And what we will see now is that our compare dataset node is receiving three items from MySQL, one item from pipe drive. And we can see that two of those only existed in MySQL input one. So it created two pipe drive persons. The pipe drive node is pretty simple. We're using the resource person, the operation create. And then we're using expressions to map fields like the name field to our incoming name field, the email field and the phone field. And like that, if we're looking into pipe drive, we can see that we have these two newly created contacts. So this is how you use the compare dataset node to create new persons and create new contacts. So what about if one data item changed? Meaning what if we don't actually add a new contact, but we just change some data here. So for the purpose of this demo, let's change the phone number for Kai Jakobson in pipe drive. So now these two phone numbers are different in MySQL and in PipeDrive. Let's go back to our workflow, execute the workflow again. And what we should see now is that we have none new items in PipeDrive or MySQL, so we don't create any new contacts or persons. And we have three different items that apparently changed. So connected to our different output in the compare dataset node, we can see here a new if node and the if node says data changed. And from there only one item continues. So how is this working? Well, let's look at how the, what, us, what the compare dataset node is actually giving us if both are different. So we get the keys object for email and we get the same object for all the fields that were the same in both input one and input two. And then we get a different field that is telling us, hey, what fields were actually different in both input one and input two. So naturally this will be ID and the updated on timestamp that exists in both services. And in this case here, it's the phone number that we changed. So what is the if node doing? Well, this if node checks if actually any name or phone field exists in the different field of our compare data set output. So in this case, we can see that if nothing changed, only ID and updated on exists. And if something changed, there needs to be either a phone or a name field inside different. So what we've done is we've used an expression. Expressions in NLN are all these things in between two brackets. And inside expressions, we can map data like the different name property or the different phone property. And everything inside those expressions is also JavaScript. So what we've actually done here is we created an OR condition that is checking if either the different name or different phone field exists. And if one of those exists, it's true. And the data continues in our flow. So now we can see that for a true branch, only the one with the actual phone number that changed continues to execute. And our false branch where nothing changed, we also do nothing. So connected to true, we go forward and we can see that the item propagates to our update MySQL contact because let's remember, we actually did change the phone number in pipe drive. So how is it, does it know that it should update MySQL here? Well, we're actually using the updated on timestamp. So the first thing that we do is we use the date and time node because our MySQL timestamp is a little bit different from our pipe drive timestamp coming in an input two. 
So we've used an expression to map the timestamp as a value. And then we're setting it back to the same property. So different updated on input one. And we're using this custom time format to actually match both timestamps time stamps to the same format. So now we have two timestamps that we can easily compare. This is where the next node is coming in place, the if updated on node. So if updated on is using a condition, a date and time condition. We use expressions to map both our input one and input two timestamp. And then we use the operation occurred after. Meaning, if input one, the changes occurred after input two, we go to true, else we go to false. Let's remember that input one is our MySQL node and input two is our Pipedrive node. We just changed the phone number in Pipedrive, so input two actually occurred after input one, and that's why we're going down the false branch. And the false branch connects to our MySQL contact instead of our Pipedrive contact. So all we have to do now is actually select the data that we want to update. And we use a little trick here. And the trick is that we are using a set node to actually merge the data from input two. Input two is our Pipedrive node. So again, we use expressions to map our ID, name, and phone field. The email is the same. We don't need to work with the email here. So let's look at name. What we're actually doing is we're using an expression with a little if condition inside. So the if condition tells NNN, hey, if we do have something that is a different name, then actually use the different name from input two. Input two is our pipe drive. And if it's not different, just use the same name. So if names are identical in both Pipedrive and MySQL. So this is the case here. The name is identical. So the name in that case will be Kai Jakobson. The difference is the phone number. So if the phone number exists in the different field, we are selecting input two here from Pipedrive. And that's how we create a simple data schema for ID, name, and phone that we should update in MySQL. And the update MySQL contact node is pretty easy. It's an execute query node where we use, again, expressions to create an SQL query that is updating the contact, setting the name to name, the phone to phone, where the ID is ID. So which ID are we using? So that's another important aspect here. We are using name and phone of input two from Pipedrive, but we are always using the ID from input one, so MySQL, because we want to update the already existing contact in MySQL. And again, we are using the same logic here with different ID. If that exists, use the different ID from MySQL. If not, use the same ID. And we have to do this in case that both the IDs, either in MySQL or in Pipedrive, are the same. In the end, we have a valid MySQL ID and can update our contact. So now let's try the other way around. Let's go into MySQL. Let's refresh the page. We can see that the phone number updated from Pipedrive. And now let's select another contact in the MySQL database, actually rename this contact to Audrey Stolz. And in AdMiner, we have to set the new timestamp manually here. So save. Now we have changed the name in MySQL. Let's go back to our workflow, execute again. And what we should see now is that the data is flowing through the compare data set node. Again, we don't need to create a new person or a new contact. We see that one item did actually change. And now, if updated on, 
our timestamp occurred later in MySQL than in Pipedrive. So we are going up the route to Pipedrive. And again, we are using the same strategy in our set input node to map incoming data. But now, instead of using input two here, we are using input one for name and phone. Input one is coming from MySQL because MySQL changed. And the ID, we are actually selecting the input two ID from Pipedrive. So like that, we have all the data necessary to update our Pipedrive person. And this looks like this. We have the resource person, the operation update. We are using an expression to map our ID and our name and our phone number. And that's how we actually updated our Pipedrive contact from Audrey Hafner to Audrey Stolz. So now we can simply activate our workflow. We are using a scheduled trigger to execute that workflow every five minutes. We use activate here, got it. And now every five minutes, NADN will automatically load all the MySQL data and Pipedrive data, compare data sets, create persons that are missing in Pipedrive or create contacts that are missing in MySQL and is using our strategy to compare which data changed later in each of those systems to update the according contacts. Thank you for tuning in. Happy automating.